If you are curious to see what a tiny house dweller buys when they're on vacation, you are in the right place. If you're not interested in that, leave a comment and let me know what you would rather see me make. So I visited the coast of Maine about a month ago and I, you know, just sort of let myself be freer than I normally am with my purchases but I still have to be really careful about what I can and cannot bring into this teeny tiny space. So if you're curious about the things that made the cut, keep watching. So my family and I always make a point to go to Monsweek, which is a big flea market in Wiscasset, and I got a few goodies from there this year. There's usually a good selection of jewelry. We have this little daisy band that I've never seen anything like it before in my life. I think I paid $35 for this. It's a really unique piece and the seller was pretty hard on that price. Usually at a flea market you can haggle and get things for a really good deal, but I think that was a fair price for this. The necklace, the moonstone necklace with the sterling silver chain, I want to say $20. And then this little black ring, um, it's just a, a silver plated piece, I'm pretty sure. And it's probably a one or two bucks. There's one stand that is always there in the back corner and it's just like a shed full of stuff. I'm sure you could find some real, real goodies if you dug through there. Um, but on the tables that they had set up front, I found a few books that I am curious about. I haven't read either of these yet. If you have, let me know if I picked good ones. This one I mostly chose for the cover. It's called The Bone People by Carrie Hulm. And it takes place in New Zealand, which is one of my fantasy places to visit. The second book I got, I'm kind of surprised I haven't already read it. It's called Earth in the Balance by Al Gore. The pages are really aged. This might gross some people out, but oh my gosh, it, sm <laughs> it smells like attic. <laughs> I love used books. They have so much character. I think these were like a couple bucks a piece. I also got a set of silver from the same booth. I just wanted this spoon with this beautiful detailing on it. My spoon was always dirty, so I decided to get a couple more. Spoon number two. Look at this cute yellow handle. I was on a big yellow kick recently, and this is a nice like big spoon. You know, sometimes you get a spoon and it's just this tiny little like wimpy spoon, which is fine for some things, but I am a cereal and soup gal. You need a big spoon for that. Also at the kitchen store, I got a nice long, like small stirring spoon because I like to cook with the same spoon that I'm going to eat with so that I only dirty one spoon. You feel me? This was on sale. This is like two bucks. Um, again, the yellow just, just sold me. I really like tiny plates because they fit in my sink. This is a sponge replacement and for some reason I was under the impression that it was sort of eco or environmental in some way. This is called an eco scrubby and I've read this whole little, every all the literature that came with it um, and I think the only reason it's better than a regular sponge is because it lasts longer. That's great, but it is still made out of virgin plastic, which is not great. So I'd rather use something compostable. This I have probably used like every single day since I got it, a useful reusable straw. So I bought it because of this slender shape, like fits so well into my purse. The other straws are like bulky or square or dumb. I don't know. This is, Zoku pocket straw. Boop. And they had all different colors and it's extendable. It has this little nice rubber bit at the end. It comes with a little cleaner that just fits right in there. Boop. Boop. It's very nice. I like it a lot. I want to buy one for everybody I know. Last thing from the kitchen store is this incredible enamel mug. I collect these. It's really hard to find good sized ones. Like usually they're like little 10 ounce guys and I'm not having a 10 ounce coffee in the morning, girl. I need at least 16. So this one has a cute little, you know, tapered 
splatterware. It's stunning. How could you say no to her? I think she was probably 10 or 12 bucks. If you are a Mainer, you know what Rennie's is. If Target met Walmart, but make it outdoorsy. And where we go in Damariscotta, there's two stores. There's like a clothing store and then there's an everything else store. I got this candle. I love rose scented things. It's like if a rose was masculine. This says it is rose and oud scented, O-U-D. Do you know what that is? Please let me know. I know I could Google it. I'm not going to. Rennie's has a whole shoe section and it's always outdoorsy. They have muck, they have keen, all the hiking, brands that you would want and I got my very first pair of muck boots these have been well loved since I purchased them a month ago and I think they're incredible I've been looking for a good rain boot for longer than I can remember I think it's hard to find a rain boot that you can hike in and I did try bogs and they didn't work out if you saw my Ithaca video I did a gorge hike in these fabulous. So I don't know how this works, but Rennie's sells brand names. So I got a Vans cropped long sleeve, but like the only Vans thing they had was this particular, this exact shirt in like three different colors and sizes, you know? Super cute. Says off the wall on the sleeve. I've been really into this like pinky mauve business. I think when I was younger, I thought pink was too girly but now I've given myself permission to like it and I'm thriving. Also their logo is like a little silicone, like rubbery guy, very fun. I dipped my toe into the Dickies uh, pool and I'm never going back. I love these. They fit really, really, really well, um, especially in like the waist and booty and everything. I should preface, I wear men's pants um, when I'm looking for work pants. And the Carhartts have a lot of wiggle room for those who may be well endowed, but these are a lot like more snug fitting around that area. So they actually fit as if they were made for a woman to wear them, I think. Um, but yeah, they're just this really gorgeous olive green color and I wore them caving recently and they held up perfectly. Big fan, big fan. I think these were probably 30 bucks. So the other place we usually visit is the flagship LL Bean store in Freeport, Maine. Oh my gosh, there's so many leaves falling right now. This LL Bean store is open 24 seven which I think is fascinating. And I am so curious as to who frequents the L.L. Bean at the witching hour. If you've never been to an L.L. Bean, it is similar to Cabela's. It's an outdoor rec store. So I could not leave without a new pair of darn tufts, mostly because I was wearing cotton socks and my feet were sweating. So I really, really, really wanted to switch them out. A new pair of darn tufts will run you about 20 bucks, but they are, um, forever warranty, lifetime warranty. So if anything happens to them, you can write the company and they will reimburse you. I have done that before, confirmed, you, it's, it's for real. I perused the camping section when I was there and acquired myself a little GSI pour over, which I have been using every day since I bought it and I am in love. That's all the room it takes up. I think this was 12 bucks. If you want to see this in action, I made a video of it over on TikTok. The link is in the description below this video. I got like three or four what I would consider luxury items while I was there. And this is one of them. This corduroy button down is just the most fall thing you could ever ask for. Nice big pockets right here. When a button down has these pockets, oh my gosh, it's the best. Ah, mochi! And I love it dearly. It also has big, big, big pockets on the inside, you know, for your trinkets. This is a, an extra large, by the way. I really like wearing oversized clothing. Before I forget to talk about them, 
Another luxury item are the pants that I'm wearing. These are by the brand Oh My Gauze. And these came from a shop called Women of Substance. And they're like genie pants is what I would call them. A little bit cinched at the bottoms. Like I'm getting away with wearing sweatpants, but I look put together. So one of my favorite stores to go to is Mexicali Blues. And I fell in love with this. What would you call this? Is this like a maxi romper? It's incredible. It is the love of my life. Also from that store, these wonderful, wonderful incense matches. But if you've never tried these, I think they're a couple bucks each. Use them to like a regular match, but you, when you blow it out, it sort of burns like an incense and makes your whole space smell delightful. I have a few little trinkets in here. I got this cutie patootie hat beanie with the main flag logo on it. Some states just have a nice flag. Pennsylvania is not one of those states. I think this was like 20 bucks. It's so like stretchy and warm. Mmm, super duper cozy. And somehow I only have one beanie. My other one is a Carhartt. And so I added this little fella to the family. I really like collecting magnets because I think that my refrigerator is out to get me. So when I decorate it, it makes me feel a lot better. This was $3.50 and I got this really cute one. I just thought that was really silly and funny. That was five bucks. When we were in Damascata, we went to this new kombucha bar that was in town. Their merch was all printed on thrifted clothing. So I picked out this really cute tank top because I don't have very many. I have one that I was like re-wearing a lot on the trip. So adding another one to my closet and my collection was really a wise move. So people don't think I'm stinky and dirty, even though I am. So their logo is printed on the back here. And then it has a cute little slit in the bottom too. So very sassy, also super soft. I think this was maybe 10 bucks. Okay, the last two things are definitely luxury things. This linen <laughs> tea towel with ginkgo leaves on it. Come on, I can't say no to a ginkgo leaf. This was like $18. And Maine, if you've never been, is all about the artisan. So it's really easy to find stuff that's local, handmade, handcrafted. I actually have the tag from this Woodnote Cotton Tea Towel. Hand printed in Maine on 100% cotton, shopwoodnote.com. So they had so many beautiful patterns, but you know, at 18 bucks a towel, you can only pick one. The last item is a pair of Fjall Raven pants. If you don't know what that brand is, it is basically Swedish Patagonia. In Freeport, there is an outlet store where I got these pants for a steal of $100. <laughs> these are the G1000 um, hiking pants. They look like this. I'll be honest with you, I thought I was purchasing like a waterproof winter hiking pant. That is not the case. I truly just went into the store to see how these fit so that I could maybe order them in the future. And the fact that I found them for less than $200 and that I, that they fit so well really, uh, you know, set my impulses off. A lot of this shopping was impulsive in nature. There were very few items that I had thought about buying before buying them. And that in itself is a really unhealthy habit to get into. I think a good rule of thumb, if you're looking to either save money or to downsize is to give yourself a window to think about a purchase before following through with it. It's just a good way to avoid buyer's remorse. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button down here. If you want more of this type of content, I have a thrifting haul video over on my Patreon. That link is in the description of this video. Thank you so much for hanging out and I will see you next time.